the United States retains the capability to deploy forces on short notice, and we will further reinforce our defensive air support capabilities in the coming days. Those are the powerful declarations from the Pentagon on September 29th, as military conflicts escalate in the Middle East, and Iran sets its sights on targeting American personnel and interests in the region. Amidst this rising tension, the U.S. military has made a bold move by reaching out to SpaceX, expressing interest in purchasing a Starship vehicle for its exclusive use. Now more than ever, the military is closely monitoring Starship's every move, targeting this groundbreaking vehicle for crucial defense operations. Let's find out everything in today's episode. We already know the military has been buying launch services from SpaceX to deploy military satellites, right? But there's actually more to it. The truth is, they plan to fly this massive rocket as a government-owned, government-operated asset on sensitive and potentially dangerous missions. In other words, the Pentagon wants full control of the vehicle. And honestly, it makes a great deal of sense. We may have seriously underestimated the importance of military air transport and the associated costs. Right now, the U.S. Air Force is facing a huge challenge. Its largest strategic transport aircraft are aging, and they're no longer in production. Take, for example, Lockheed Martin. Martin's C-5M Super Galaxy, capable of carrying up to 131 tons. However, only 52 of these are in service. Similarly, Boeing's C-17 Globemaster III, which is smaller with a payload capacity of 77 tons, stopped production in 2015. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship is promising a revolution in strategic transport. The future V-3 version is expected to carry over 200 tons into orbit. That's more than the combined payload capacity of both the C-5M and the C-17. Starship's cargo bay is so massive that it could easily fit the Eiffel Tower, if disassembled, giving it incredible potential for transporting military hardware before reassembly. But what's most remarkable is the cost. SpaceX predicts that the cost of getting payloads into orbit could drop from the current $2,000 per kilogram to just $200 or even less. That kind of price reduction could completely transform how we think about military logistics and the ability to rapidly deploy assets anywhere in the world. Absolutely, the capabilities of Starship are truly extraordinary, and the cost is incredibly attractive. This is a deal the military won't want to pass up. In fact, the idea of using space technology for military transport isn't new. In fact, it dates back to the early days of the space age. I'm talking about Project Icarus, a concept the U.S. Air Force explored in the 1960s. Project Icarus was an incredibly bold idea for its time. It envisioned a massive, single-stage rocket standing 64 meters tall, with the capacity to carry a payload of up to 450 tons. The goal of Icarus was to create a vehicle capable of rapidly deploying a significant military force to any point on Earth. Specifically, it was designed to transport a 1,200-strong military unit, creatively dubbed rocket marine, along with all their equipment, weapons, and even personal jetpacks. The vehicle would fly at the edge of the atmosphere, crossing continents in record time, and then perform a vertical landing right at the battlefield if necessary. However, Project Icarus never made it past the feasibility study stage. But now, with Starship on the scene, the idea is being revived. Starship will be capable of carrying military cargo, supplies, aid, hardware, and even combat forces to a location on the other side of the globe in just one hour, traveling at speeds exceeding Mach 20. In 20 2021, a major step was taken towards turning the dream of military space transport into reality. The U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory launched the rocket cargo program as a direct continuation of the military's seven-decade-long ambition to use space rockets for logistics. And this concept is so promising that out of hundreds of research and development projects the U.S. Air Force is working on, rocket cargo was selected as one of the four highest-priority Vanguard technology programs. To bring this vision to life, the Air Force awarded SpaceX a $102 million contract. The goal of this contract is for SpaceX to demonstrate point-to-point -point space transport technology with the first demonstration planned for 2026. General Arnold W. Bunch Jr., who led the Air Force Materiel Command at the time, emphasized the significance of this program. Rapid logistics underpins our ability to project power. That is the fundamental motivation for initiating the rocket cargo program. We see its initial application in swiftly restoring operational capability for forces forward in austere environments, as well as dramatically reducing the time required to deliver crucial humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. However, the potential of Starship in the military and national security sectors goes far beyond just a cargo transport vehicle. 
What do you think about building and maintaining an entire military infrastructure in orbit? It might sound like science fiction, but it's absolutely within reach. You see, most satellites are stuck in fixed orbits and eventually become space junk due to fuel limitations. But once in-orbit refueling technology is perfected, Starship could act as a space gas station. Military satellites and other space assets could be refueled, extending their operational life and allowing them to change orbits easily to meet new mission requirements. Column James Horn, Deputy Director of Operations at U.S. Space Systems Command, once said the military is going to need that infrastructure on orbit, not just for cargo, storage, and movement, but for a lot of other applications. We're going to need gas tanks in the future, and the military could gain an absolute advantage if they combine that future capability with SpaceX's Starshield satellite system. That's right. Even before those in-orbit applications become a reality, SpaceX has already launched Starshield, a satellite network developed specifically for military purposes, serving the U.S. Department of Defense as its exclusive customer. The Starshield Shield system consists of low Earth orbit satellites, specially designed based on Starlink's capabilities, but with added features. These satellites are capable of carrying payloads, conducting target tracking, optical and radio reconnaissance, and even providing early missile warnings. These are some truly remarkable capabilities for monitoring and securing airspace. In short, Starshield is like a set of eyes in space for the United States. In fact, back in 2021, the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office and SpaceX signed a secretive $1.8 billion contract to code developed the Starshield military satellite system, well before the name Starshield was even publicly revealed. This highly classified deal was only disclosed in 2023. Colonel Eric Felt, Director of Space Architecture at the Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Space Acquisition and Integration, revealed that the U.S. Air Force could potentially acquire a Starshield satellite constellation by 2029, pending the necessary funding approval from Congress. If Starship becomes operational, we could use it to deploy these Starshield satellites satellites into space, creating a military satellite network capable of comprehensive surveillance and reconnaissance. They might even carry military payloads, detecting threats early and intercepting them. Indeed, Starship and Starshield together would form an unbeatable duo in space military technology, revolutionizing defense and security in orbit. And, have you ever heard of the concept, Rods from God? It's a type of weapon with destructive power comparable to large conventional bombs, but with extreme penetration capabilities much deeper than any current bunker-busting bombs. This makes it an ideal choice for taking out targets like bridges or, if accurate enough to hit mobile targets, an unstoppable warship destroyer. These rods are immune to modern air defense systems, capable of sinking any battleship with a single strike. Importantly, they're not nuclear weapons, so they're not classified as doomsday devices. And here's the thing. Starship has the potential to turn this concept from a theoretical idea into reality. Now, I know many people, myself included, don't want to see space become a battleground. But the truth is, the militarization of space has been happening ever since humanity launched the first artificial object into space. That object was the V-2 rocket, a military weapon. Even more, Sputnik, Gagarin, and John Glenn were launched on modified intercontinental ballistic missiles. The Gemini program was a collaboration between NASA and the U.S. Air Force, aimed at developing a military space station. GPS, the navigation system we use every day, was initially designed for military purposes. The Hubble Space Telescope evolved from the KH-11 Kennan Reconnaissance Satellite. Even the Space Shuttle was originally a joint project between NASA and the U.S. Air Force. The Air Force's requirement for a large payload bay is what led to its size. There are those who look to space for exploration, but the foundation of space travel has always had military undertones. In today's context, as space increasingly becomes a focal point in geopolitical discussions, being prepared for threats from space is essential to maintaining national security. This is precisely why the Pentagon has shown so much interest in Starship. Do you agree with the Pentagon's view? You have a different perspective. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.